Has the power come through yet? The power's come through. <laughs> I forgot to sit on the phantom power on the on the interface. Good afternoon. Good evening, Kerry and Heroism. And welcome to practicing programming and see. Thank you for joining us. Where we're going to be doing some a little bit of cleanup on Cinera. So let's just get get the code open. Um so we've got a read-only something going on because uh, the computer crashed before, it sort of froze up. Um, let's just delete that. Yeah. So what I would like to do first is a couple of little things that I did last time. So I've done three streams that were actually offline. Uh, today is day 255. I did days 254, 53 and 52 offline and that was working on basically just fixing up the um, the program so that it worked when it was offline and the problem with it was that um, when it tries to get a, qu um, a quote from Interbot's store it would fail obviously because there's no internet connection and having failed it would try and return but it would return from a function without having actually freed up or declaimed some memory which it had previously claimed so that was the only problem there and I'd just like to um, address a couple of little things here which I which I did they're just super, very superficial things uh, it's just simply renaming it as buffers main to this buffers master. That might be the only one actually. So that's done one of that. One of those. So that's that ticked off. And reverse the declaim and use many buffers called. One reverse the fields of index buffer. Index buffers, index buffers, index buffers. Right, yeah. It's just this. Right, okay. Yeah, it's just them. So now, basically, what I did was. It do, it's really superficial. It's just it's just declaiming them in the reverse order of when you claim them. So basically, the, when you, when I claim all of these, I'm claiming them in this order, uh, and then really you need to be declaiming all your buffers in reverse order. And I just did that for these guys. So I declaimed this first and that, but then I wanted to do it for both of these types, but I inadvertently reversed this. And then I reverse this. What I should have done was reverse that, then reverse this. So that's those two little pieces of code addressed. Uh, let me this book up. Just delete those two little items, but we can keep them. Now, another thing that I could do, which I'm not going to do, but I could is to, um, in the event that we don't successfully get some quotes, in the event that we don't successfully acquire the quote information from Interbot, we could make it actually continue to generate the file, just putting some sort of placeholder text. It's a collaborator here actually. <laughs> um, we could make it do that. Or we could just leave it as it is, which is just uh, skipping the file. Uh, and I think it kind of doesn't really matter. Um, I don't really have a decent idea as to how I want to do the, like what kind of place all the text I'd like to do. And also, it's all online anyway. I mean, it's. In, an ord in the ordinary course of events, it's online. So, you know, for an instance of Cinera that's actually working, this operable 
in operation. It's going to have to have an interconnection. So I don't think we really need to bother too much about um, this sort of idea, at least not yet. Because we simply just do not support like non-offline stuff. Like for example, let's get the thing up. This is all, um, well this, this section here, this video is, is online. It requires an internet connection to get this video from YouTube. We don't currently support having like a local video file that it could just use locally. Um, I think once we do have that, we might want to address things more like, you know, making it more sort of offline friendly, if you know what I mean. But until we have the, that, I think we can reasonably just go ahead and ignore it really, but at least make sure, <laughs> which is what, I've, what I did last time, make sure that it just doesn't crash when you don't have an internet connection. Uh, yeah. So that's those two things done. Next thing, yeah, this is my search words. So, well, it's really just a collective search page. So we've got the search page here for Hamid Hero, we've got a filter, Hamid Hero. Um, well, it's a search page for the Hamid Hero, the code project. And here we have one for all of the sub projects. So we want to just define the rule which determines whether first of all the filter gets drawn at all. I don't think we'd like to have maybe a rule that has something to say about the top level person. So if I just delete this, do I have a hammer? No, it's not a hammer. Let me just illustrate this. work actually because there's no space between those things. It seems to have done. <clears throat> I say it seems to have done. Under the breath. So yeah it hasn't actually done what I was kind of expecting it to have. project here is that just because it's Well, it's because of the space actually. Let's just get rid of that space, or rather, insert the space. Yeah, you do need the space actually, don't you? What did, what did the config say? Did you have anything to say about it? to it? We do, and very fine landmarks. I don't think that's getting called. Yeah, that's a bit cheesy actually, isn't it? We've got multiple calls to print block. Um, and we're individually counting them out. Just uh, turn off the optimizations.
if you're not allowed title consider included wait what sorry the inclusion title up there. I think that should be fine. We've got the warning for the steer included but then we would have popped back out to here so that should have been alright. Yeah it's just not um, never popping up. And it's never telling us about the fact that we've mis kind of written that have we, has it? I mean assuming that, that is a problem it does do let's just stick the things in So it has now generated it. Okay, so I must have just killed the code that actually deals with that then. Because what should be happening is that this, um, all of these handmade people actually get um, grouped together. So they can must have. Yeah, I must have need that code. So what what's the function? Um So this thing here, so we're passing stored p, and this project of descendants have public entries need to take stored p. So how many times are we calling this? Right, yeah. Stored p, and this guy's taking zero. So does that mean stored pre the pointer, isn't it? Pretty the public entries. Is that really necessary to have two different things? Not sure. But anyway, this is it is the global search page. So if we've got a project, you do that. Otherwise you get the projects block. Get the first project out. Ah, oh, hang on. Is it just a case of us not having actually added it to the database? Is that all that's going on? Yeah. 
pretty sure I'm entitled to just delete that. So I have moved that out of the way. Alright, yeah, so it's not a mismatch of the database. So there probably is something in here. Um, just have a quick candor at that base page, actually. Just to see what I'm talking about. Here, yeah, so basically what I'm talking about here is here, I'm at here. I'm adhere a sort of holding project. Hopefully we should see that change at least. If we don't see that change then we need to handle that. So yeah, we're not seeing the holding project anywhere in here. Is basically what I'm talking about. Was I right there? Right. So if we're not the top level, yeah. And the top level is a bool. So we're saying that that's true. Getting back in the swing of this, so um, basically just determining what's what's what really, how it's working. Yeah, there we go. And now also, bitwise is probably going to have a thing including it. These guys also do, although you can't see it because it's in a title, uh, which is perfectly okay. I think it's legit to be able to do this basically so you've got a a thing that doesn't have a title but it gets grouped right if that makes sense um, and then on basically if you want to I actually just try this No, think about it. It might be, it might be a legit way of doing it. Because you can do that in C, actually, can't you? You can just bunch everything up together. There you have it. And just to prove it. unfortunate that we don't actually handle updating the con oh yeah we need to do that actually we do need to update handle um like um auto reloading of the config all right so we've got the whole project there so if I just toggle that off toggle that off right you've got this sort of a nice situation um, and then the people can like choose how they want to actually display these things you know how they want to name them like if they want to give it a uh, holding project name at all or if they're not forced um, they can choose not to uh, and it will just totally handle it but we have uh, yeah so what, what we've done there is we've just distinguish between, we've stopped distinguishing between top level and non-top level, basically. 
So yeah, I don't think the, the rule should have anything to do with top levelness. Right. I think the rule really should be twofold. So first of all, we should be saying, <clears throat> are there more than one projects that have children? Or sorry, are there more than one projects that have entries? If so, then we are going to be producing a filter for them. And then the secondary question is going to be, does our current Um, project so like yeah if the project that we're, that we're talking about at first if like the parent project has any siblings then we want to output the top level so maybe we do want the top level after all <laughs> Well, we've now lost the structure. <laughs> it's like when they want right. Not top level, so that was we were passing files for everyone, weren't we? Maybe we do need top level this after all. So this should give us our stuff. Yeah, the whole this should give us the holding thing, and this will simply say, "Well, it's the project, isn't it?" <laughs> I think what this what that means. Let's have it here, everybody. I think what this means is that if I go to hero, then we shouldn't see the holding project mentioned anywhere. I think that's what that means. Yeah, that's what that means. Which is sort of okay. See what the places where this is called. It's called in three locations. And this is to generate global thing, isn't it? No. Nope. Search a buffer. This is to generate filter and then it's a project and children. Oh right, so to buffer and this function calls generate filter and it is a project children. Wait wait we're talking about generate filter and this is a project children. <laughs> right. The next thing up is the actual fun function itself. 
yeah, so it's a function that calls itself. And the only place, the only two places that call it elsewhere is here, right? So it's perfectly legit for this to call itself, and it calls itself with false for some reason. So that's to say that it's not the top level. Which stands to reason because it's, we're talking about children. I think the rules should be. It's basically like if multiple versions of entries then generate the filter at all. Right. And then having determined that, we then say, like, if the project we've been presented with, which is only going to apply for this case actually, it doesn't apply for this one. And I think this is just saying if it's the top level, like the global one. siblings yeah if we have siblings then we have put the top level person Well, it's like if project's block count is greater than one, isn't it? And the siblingness is only going to come into it for the top level, isn't it? I think this is kind of making sense. Then we output it to the top level. Or rather include and it's basically that. Okay. So
Wait, is this what I want to be talking about? So we're going to increment the fan from the public entries. If that is equal to n, then we return true. Right. Simply enough. So that's not to generate the thing at all. Genesis at all. So is that correct? I forgot to say that. Yeah, it's possible I might have to do a bit more trickery poker here actually. Because what I'm talking about actually is the filter image. Yeah, it is this. Now, what we're going to do? The indentation level has been touched. to make sure that the filter is still available. Buffers and we use the we would be pending it in the free good. Yeah, so that would be included here. Mind you, that might be it actually. Pen the buffer.
is the filter. Got an open note for an image here. Just check what it's talking about. So old to new. So we've got the end of so old to new. All we're talking about is not producing this really. That is so old to new. Center index filter. So it might be that actually. And then we're just talking about this bit that we're not bothering with, right? Now, because we don't use the index just yet, do we? Oh, yeah, we do. Oh, it does both, right. So it would generate a filter and then it would generate this. I see. That to the index. Does it filter them that to the index? And at the end, it probably just filter, doesn't it? the two questions that I have are, well, it's, um, if at least n thingamajigs <coughs> then produce the filter. I think we just need to we need to split these split these this functionality out I think. If you go through generate should what should be in the buff uh, in the filter then go through again generate what should be in the index. And then having done that, just copy those things into the relevant buffer. Because 
because I think we do need to be doing them differently. Yeah, let's do that. Double check that this hasn't completely blown it all up. <laughs> Should probably actually remove that sleep because it's just um, not really helping us at the moment. Yeah, so that seems to be all right. Double check. Yeah, that seems to be fine. Yeah, all right. 
So what we want to do now is distinguish between um, instances where we need to do the filter, where we don't need to do the filter. So if we go up here, we want to do the filter if we've got more than at least n products of public entries. So it's this test here. And then same deal. Well, hold on a minute. The at least n produce of public entries was supposed to be like the single test that you do. You do it once. Uh, and then from then on, you just do whatever needs doing. I don't know, dude. So we do you know, get the filter and we we'll get the index offers. So for at least two very different entries, generate the filter for it. Yeah, I think that's all right. And then the other question was this, wasn't it? If the project block count is greater than one, which is down here. We pass true, I think, maybe. Let's just try it. Oh, actually, let's just do the do the one thing first. So what we've done so far is just say if at least n products are public entries, if at least two products are public entries, then generate the filter for it. But now that I think about it, that ain't right. That's only right for this case down here. Right, I'll tell you why. I need to generate, well, doesn't matter. Okay, we shouldn't be generating this, is what we shouldn't be doing. We've got a P. If we've got a P, in this case, we want to be saying, we should be saying if P has any siblings, is what we should be saying. Right. In this case, P will be coming in as the Hamid Hero holding project. Right, it's this. So that doesn't have any siblings. Well, does it actually? Well, actually, it does. Doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, it sort of does have siblings. Because you think of the <laughs> right, we're talking about this project here, and in the same level, we've got P. That's a sibling of it. Bitwise is a sibling of it, and then Risky Business is a sibling of it. I 
this is what I want to be producing for this page. Right, that is right. <laughs> and this is right as well. to prevent is this it's a leaf isn't it so this has no children if the current project has no children. That would certainly be a way of preventing that from showing up. We do still want to obviously show the index itself. Right, what we're talking about here is preventing the filter from getting drawn. Why do I keep going up to there? I would never pop back to this function. Oh, this buffer, rather. It always goes up to there. Anyway, who cares? If P. I think it's really if P child count is greater than zero. Do we know that? I think we do, don't we? then it's actually not going to correctly do this. We need to sort that out. Yeah, we do need to definitely sort that out. I think. Free buffer. Append the buffer. Yeah, because having, having generated the indices, we will potentially have something in the filter to add. I know, hang on. let me just sort that out. again. Hope this hasn't crashed anything. Really could be in the conflict that that, that thing is. We are sleeping because that. Seems like it pauses for quite a, a lengthy amount of time. Anyway, um, right, here we go. So we've got this, this guy being drawn, but there's nothing in there, nothing happening, nothing cooking. 
got the filter but nothing so I've clearly popped that in the wrong place yeah it was right there wasn't it Yeah, I mean, I guess we could just sort out this logic first. Sort of the filter requirement logic first. And then go ahead and do what we need to do. So if we've got P. this and this or are these end products I mean that's basically it isn't it And then wherever it says filter, so for that filter thing, we would say do some stuff there. I think that's probably it, isn't it? append filter container and then after having actually generated the filter append the information in the filter to it uh, and then this close node u line is probably going to be something to do with it also isn't it Let's get this actually doing something first. Then we can worry about that. I feel like I can get rid of that. So if the filter is going on. I mean, for all that. got a P and the P's child is going to be greater than zero then we want to filter or at least two products have got <laughs> public entries then we want to also create a filter <laughs> and then down here We don't need to comp keep computing that over and over again. We just um, use what we've already figured out. 
which feels a bit better, feels a bit like what I was hoping really. You determine that once and then you just keep using that information that we already figured out. And then the only extant question is, do any of these need to be included within this if? Now we do have a little bit of an asynchronicity. Well, what's, what's happening there? We still have the filter image getting drawn. I would not have expected that to happen. If that Oh, yeah, it shouldn't be that actually. We need to do that logic differently. We've lost some stuff. We have got a superfluous diff, diff, haven't we? So that's that's your answer. And that is to do with we've closed that div. Yeah, is it just the one or is it two? That's the question. So it's not happy with the both of them, it seems. Um, do you get that? Oh, if I don't click. Query container, the index control. do it. I don't understand why. Yeah, it's probably that, isn't it? So it's a div index filter, center index filter, which really ought to be all of this, I think. And then it's this secondary interior div, I think, is probably the one it's talking about. So that's probably fine now. But what's going on here? Yeah, that's what you want. So because there's only one, is that working? Yeah. So because there's one, there's no filter, basically, is what all that was going on there. Sinner index. Project hero.
it's in our index projects. It's the thing that we need to be talking about. That sets the indentation level in decurrency by two. Now that might just be necessary if it's if the filter is required. Determines the filter requirements. This gets the buffers ready, and then if a filter is required, we just do that. to build it, I'm not sure how convinced that is. I'll just let this run. Just do it accidentally mess up anything. Might actually be nice just to separate that out from the actual from the actual stuff that needs to happen. Not that this doesn't need to happen, but you know what I mean. It doesn't fancy it. So those two isn't it so the, yeah so at this point the indentation width level will be here I think yeah that's what you want does it close the page properly it does yep we are getting a something going out the bottom here oh, we're getting a, I think a new line Something. Let's just have a look at this file. So maybe that's fine. Right. So this may be a difference to the output. Now this one does have a thing because it's got multiple rays. That's an interesting thing. Let me just use it on do it on risky. Yeah, now we have computer organization on design and risk five reader. Both of which are in the book club. Right, the book club is there. So you've got Risky Business, Riskalaneous, they've got the book club. You know what, dude? I think we nailed it. I do believe we've nailed it. So, how many are in projects? All of this crap. Risky business with its sort of holding project, but there's no actual title for it. And the risky business holding project. And then the chance. 
So yeah, the asynchronicity that I just briefly touched on was that we're talking about at least end products have public entries in this instance. And in this instance, we're only saying if the, if the child count is greater than zero, but it almost seems like we want to be actually saying Do the um, do we and any of our children have public entries? Which we can do actually, can't we? <laughs> The synchronicity bug. That we're going to be treating these guys basically this basically similarly. So if we're, we're not the uh, if we're not all the Eve, has my blanket stopped heating up? It has. I should mention here that I have a beautiful heated over blanket. I'm going to show this on camera. It is plugged into the electricity, <laughs> plugged into the mains. And heating me up. The drink has gone cold though because it's an absolute fridge freezer in this room and in this property in general. So if we've got a project, we want to be talking about the project itself. We want to be saying, are we not a leaf, first of all? And having determined that we're not a leaf, do we or any of our descendants have public entries? If so, then we need the filter. Yeah, I guess that'd be fair. I was just trying to think of like how that could actually work in practice, or how it could apply to us. The only one that we've got that isn't really the only one that's just kind of like this is the ray one. Right. Now all of these guys do not have any entries. It's only this that has entries. Now granted this is only test stuff. But I was basically wondering if we would actually want this test rather than being prepared to send us our public entries. Um the multiple of them have public entries. I guess what this should actually stamp out, although it probably really won't actually be generating a thing at all for it. Well, it might do, it might, it might generate it. It would be for these people. So this thing here is not a leaf, right? It has children, but it has no entries. So let's just check the actual 
config. Let's see what we called it. So we called one of the project. Uh, sorry, one of the project software. So if here we just put software. I'd expect to see an index, but no filter. All right, we don't produce that at all. That's fine. That's completely fine with me. So we can't test that. Yeah, so if there's no actual entries for a thing, it doesn't get generated. So what that sort of suggests is... It kind of just suggests that this is the first test, doesn't it? Well, hang on. Are we even going to be getting here? No, we won't be. Because um, this has already done the test, hasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> well, wait a minute. Um, generate a player page. No, no, it's not that. Generate search page. Okay, yeah, so it hasn't actually got there yet. Uh, sorry, it didn't test it. So we still don't really know if anybody's got any entries. Which got inserted there. Trees. Oh right, so we have tested here. Just double check that that is the function that people are calling. Yeah, it is. Right, fine. And that's from here. So that's passed into us. <laughs> so it's the penultimate parameter. Right, yeah, there. <laughs> That's fine. We should be able to see that in the in this case, in the generate global search page version, we're passing zero here, and then we're saying using we're using projects of public entries. In the other cases, we're passing the stored p. And then we're using that stored p in this test here. In both times.
three and this. I think that's right. And this is the final thing. Yeah. I think that's what I want to say. Just sort of makes it a bit kind of sensible, I think. Right, past the P, then that can itself use the P to determine whether it's got public entries. Oh shit, actually. It's that, it's the other logic again, isn't it? <laughs> We need to be talking about if we got if we got a p, then we say <laughs> just wrong. I need to separate it out. I'm pretty sure, don't I? Because I want to be doing an if, an else if. I only want to be saying this. If we haven't got this, I don't be saying this. If we have got that, uh, gosh, I mean, if this at all, that's the first thing. Then if P, That's why I do this. Yeah, I don't suppose there is actually, because it's just it's all in the same thing. I guess you could maybe do a ternary. What do you call it? A tre treasury conditional. Do work is it false? And then if do do work then do it. I assume that goes down to the bottom of the function, yeah. Did 
this does. We don't get the top level person outputted, which is fine, totally fine by me. Uh, the reason for that is. Got a, the reason we've got a project so we're talking about hero we're just not outputting the title of it I think it is the top level. I think that's the idea. So in the filter, the generic filter of products and children, which if not top level. If we've got a P, the first one says that that is true. So if I just set, set this to false, so we're saying that it's not top level. I believe that that would then make the first person actually show up. So the handmade hero holding project should occur in the filter. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, that's fine. So that's how we prevent that from happening. Now, what is the trueness in this all about? Is that even necessary anymore? I think we just do it. Whatever it is, we just do it. Whether it's top level or whether there's an edge count or not, just go for it. And then for the this interior bit, where it is checking if there's an edge count, I think we let that check it because uh, this is going to loop over the edge counts. We only want to actually do this if there is an edge counter at all. So I think that's legit. So that would have been false, so that would have been passing. And this would have been true. That would have passed. Uh, sorry, it would have failed the top levelness. And then it would have said if the entry count is greater than Thengi. So it fails that. saying false, so that would have forced it to pass. It would have forced this test to pa this path, this test to pass.
and we have already determined, haven't we, if the we we did that test previously, if predator or descendants have public entries. Right, so that was happening previously, so we would actually know. Let's just try this. Let's see if it doesn't blow up. If it blows up, then whatever. We'll just let it do it. Yeah, and there you have it. So this isn't what we want to have happen. Necessarily. But it's arguable actually whether you want to show that holding project thing. What happens if that's empty? Where's it getting this information from now? Definitely wrote it, didn't it? It knows that the title is not. I might have a whole point no this kind of title. Try building it again. That is a bit troubling. Let's just let's just nail down what's going on here. I mean, and I just simply not save that file. Is that all that happened there? Oh, it's there. Just save the file. Ah, oh, this doesn't know about the holding. Oh yeah, it does. This does know about Hamid here holding project. So there seems to be a little bit of a mismatch. That needs to resolve. Resolve this mismatch and then let's call it a day. Okay, it always goes to here. Oh, I know, is that because of. Is that because it had crashed? Alright, 
So. deleted or inserted. So it has the Hamatera holding project is the name of it. Here we've got it commented out. Yeah, the question is like, do we actually display this for Hero? And I reckon we probably don't actually, honestly. Because I think if somebody wants to display the title, we should give them the ability to display the title in the form of a tag. Yeah, given them a template tag to use to do that. Right, because this is the the thing for this. Yeah, but again, that sort of it differs from this.
Let's leave it as it was, I think. And let it just let it just generate the thing. You know, let it do that conditional. So yeah, even though it's got Mohammed here holding Brodus as the title, we're just going to see that this is just going to disappear. That's it. Yeah, I think that's more reasonable. That's what we want. But then, because code is a leaf node, it doesn't actually get a filter, which is perfect. gets filters. That's just that. Yeah, and then that gets this. I suppose the only question is, in this one, do we bother to show the title? And, uh, I don't know. I guess it doesn't hurt for now, does it? Oops. Desired filter display, yeah. Yeah, so that's that. This is Hero, it groups these guys together. Which looks great, I think. And then this thing groups Hamid Hero and Honey Fred is together. Pitwise, Frisky Fred, Frisky Business Honey Fred. And then again, right. If it doesn't have a holding project title, which is perfectly conceivable. Then you end up with a, a thing looking like this, where basically nobody has got a holding type, a holding project apart from having a chance. Sadly you can't deter distinguish between Handmade miscellany and bit bitwise at all, can you? When you hover over bitwise, well, when you hover over either of them, actually.
Yeah, I guess that's just something to, to suck up, I guess. Probably to do it, um, do a better sort of little look at these things. So that in addition to indenting them, I also sort of box them off, basically. Make a note of that actually, and let's call it a day. Let's figure out how to group it together. I mean, yeah, it's just here, isn't it? <laughs> probably generally what we want. Which is basically that leaf nodes Tested this way. Test this. So we've currently got. Not including risky. The point purpose of including is for that. So let's just so we're not doing hero. The inclusion is doing the people is what that was doing. Oh. oh Oh shit, this ain't right Is it? Yeah, this totally isn't right
Wait. That, why isn't why is that not passing actually? At least that case is it. We haven't got a field we haven't got a project, so we're saying this. It's not counting up the descendants.
Oh, it's the wrong thing again, isn't it? <laughs> isn't it? Because that needs a P. Predator or descendants with public entries. to get a filter for the top level person so we're talking about this case down here I think it's just count this, this isn't it? Count number pro count count pretty short children for the country. So we need to give it a U in sixty four. Yeah, I think that's right. Is it? <laughs> yeah, it's now not. We're now not bothered about the number of things having public entries. What we're talking about now. Is a different question. <laughs> yes, that was that was related to the end that's coming in. Now we're not bothered about that. <laughs> We probably should be, shouldn't we? So there's our filter coming back. Let's just try and drill down what we actually want to be able to do. Like if we if we let bitwise happen, I feel like this is.
I mean, clearly that's bogus. Oh, there's no asset block. Oh, is that just because it just it failed, didn't it? So we have sync DB. Two seven four. So we got to there, and it failed. We're inserting a thing. So yeah, so we. The database would have had risky business in it. And then we needed to um, insert Bitwise before it. And then after having added all the people that we actually need, we're then going to go through and delete risky business. So is this just been broken this whole time? Right, if I just let risky business get built, all the frisky business and the assets yeah right brilliant now is that broken as a result of the stuff that just changed like all we did Yeah, we're just counting out the number of projects that are public entries. I can readily do this again. Yeah, so that's where we've got up to, I believe. What's that? Number four. Yeah. So this is where we're up to. Generating risky business. We have done. So what we've tried to do here is to get that filter popping up in here. Right. And then we just comment out risky business. Let bitwise happen. Yeah. Right. Let's make a note. So this is what we're talking about, get sync db able to handle, rearrange and delete a project and update the project using the asset block. So I thought this was working, it appears not to be doing. Fix the deletion. So, <coughs> further cases.
Well, um, I guess configure this bit. Wait a minute. Generate. Yeah, just generate the risky project. That's basically it. In the case, generate risky project. Come on, the risky project generate box. And the reason that they get uh, reorganized is that they are written that way in the, in the config. That's why they can get reorganized. Right, bitwise occurs up here, and then risky, risky occurs down there. Is that true? Let me just see what happens the other way around. Like if I, if I generate bitwise, Well, let's see what happens if I do it step by step, actually. So let me... Let me let Risky get generated. Then comment out Risky. Hopefully... Well, we just don't handle the deletion. That seems to be the fundamental problem. There's the assets block. Yeah, it just busted. So is that something to do with the? I wonder if it's to do with the landmarks, uh, the um, signposts. I mean, it's just delete anything, isn't it? <laughs> Deal with this next time. So I've been going for a little while now, over two hours. Fix the deletion is probably So with bearing in mind that we don't even get down to the deletion in the original case. Right, so what I do if I let risky get generated. Risky out and let bitwise get generated. Oops. We're failing in sync DB on line eleven two five eight. Here, so we're, we're still going through this loop. This is a loop, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, we're still going through this loop. So it's before we've even got down to the deletion. Because the deletion only happens down there.
So it's really, it's just fixing the syncing DB. I guess it's the note. Fix it. Could get sync DB able to handle rearrange delete produce. Just pop that back to be sort of, what to say? It was working, but it's not anymore. <laughs> Exit. And yeah, I'm guessing it's something to do with point sideways signposts. But anyway, yeah, I've been going for two hours and twenty minutes. It's now twenty to nine, and I'm pretty hungry. So it's time to get a pizza in the oven. And uh, yeah top of the old nutrition levels. So thank you very much, Harris and Howards, for being here, for being beautiful, for being fantastic, and for being um, indexing, I guess. Um, oh yeah, we do actually need to still sort this out. So let's just make a note of it. I do want this. How far up? to a 94% dead file. What was that thing? Search page. Is part of the name, part of the part of the note. There we go. Figure out the desired filter display. Properly generating what we want. Print with a note already going to be this and that. But yeah. We need to make sure I think that's basically what we need to do. So we're not doing that, but we got sidetracked on the other thing. So I guess actually, let me just plop these right down at the bottom. Definitely a better way of making notes and keeping them sort of organised chronologically, but then with the ability to sort of prioritise things and kind of make them noticeable for next time. But anyway, that's it. Definitely game over. Until next time. Farewell for now. <laughs>